Hello and welcome to a, another screencast video. I wanted to make one of these to explain to you guys and kind of give you a little bit of explanation to activity one, two, two. Now this is round two of this video because of the fact I had my microphone turned off when I made the last one. Okay, so the updated schedule is up for you for this week. At home, you're doing one, two, two. At school, you'll be doing one, two, one. Due dates, uh, Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Okay, so let's go in, let's look at the module real quick uh, for this uh, one, two, two. And your at home activity. All right, let's get into this now. We can go ahead and navigate to one, two, two. I have the tab already open here. I am recreating this video right now, so don't click on that. Um, and then you're gonna work through number two. You can't actually answer number two because everything in this activity that says partner work is now individual work, okay? Um, I made an answer sheet for you. You should be able to make a copy of that and access that now. And then uh, from there, you can start working and moving your way forward. Uh, something to keep in mind is that you do have an online discussion question on Canvas. Uh, this video here should help you with uh, viewing and uh, how to answer questions and whatnot uh, in Canvas, okay, in Canvas um, discussions. Okay, let's look at the activity real quick. Uh, it starts off with the picture of the elephant. And remember, with a partner, it is all individual work. So go ahead and give me a list of words uh, without using the word elephant that will describe that picture. Put them in there. Just give me, you know, a list of five or so words. Uh, from there, you can't do number two. Like I said earlier, we can't do number two uh, because we're not doing it as a group. We're not doing it as a class. Move into the reflection question, talking about uh, like limitations, characteristics of the uh, elephant, et cetera, et cetera. Then we move into graphic information systems, which is GIS. We will use this quite a bit. Um, and it's actually really cool because there's a lot of different things that you can do with this particular system. There's actually an entire career field about uh, graphic, uh, geographic information systems, uh, some pretty cool stuff that happens with this, okay? Um, you're going to research uh, examples of GIS. If you go back here to Canvas, you'll see that there's a resource you can take a look at. There's another resource that'll help you break down those examples into industries, and I just did this so that the activity would move faster, uh, so you guys wouldn't spend a whole lot of time doing that. Okay, and then again, as a group, we're not doing that type of stuff. You're just going to do it on your own. Answer your reflection question. Now we get into the different layers and the different parts of the map. Uh, try If you can't tell, I'm trying to get through this video rather quickly so I don't take up a whole lot of your guys' time. Okay, so getting in here into the map. This is an interactive map, and you can click on things and and whatnot, like those, that's a ship out there. There's uh, some data buoys. All the purple dots are particular earthquakes. Uh, you know, there's your magnitude, the latitude and longitude, the depth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Well, we don't necessarily need that information. So you can see here, it says, select a city on the eastern side of Indonesia that may be at risk of a potential tsunami. A tsunami is, a tidal wave essentially that happens after an earthquake underwater. It's basically a wall of water um, that in, I believe it was 2004 in Thailand, I believe is what it was. I could be wrong on that. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, that killed a lot of people, did a lot of damage. Imagine just a wall somewhere around 20 to 30 feet tall of water traveling uh, and hitting land. Imagine that, okay? Uh, very, very destructive. So now they have tsunami warning systems, um, and that's kind of what you're, you're doing here, okay? So you select a city in the eastern side of Indonesia, type in your city. 
Now locate two buoys, uh, data buoy observation centers, and choose the buoy that is closest to the city and call it buoy one. Notification system buoy one, give me the name of it. Well, let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need on this map. So hit the arrow. We, I don't need to know where the earthquakes are right now. I don't need to know the boundaries. And I don't need to know the global shipping rates. Uh, routes, not rates. Okay. Now what I have are just the buoys and some ships out there. And now I can gather information. Okay. So for instance, let's say this is the closest one to my city. I'm just selecting one. You would say station number 52403. Okay, put it in there. Approximate distance between buoy one and the city. Uh, let's say this is still my buoy and my city is right here. What I would do if I were you is I would take my pen or pencil. This is uh, your scale. Okay, that's your scale right there. Take your pen or pencil and just scale your way across until you find it and multiply it. So let's say it's 1800 miles. I would type in 1800 miles right here. And I would do the same thing for a second buoy, okay? Uh, keep following the directions, okay? Moving on. Uh, brainstorm a list of systems that would, uh, that would be involved in the event of an earthquake and a tsunami to minimize the loss of life and property. Come up with your own list, okay? You can use a couple of mine, but don't, um, don't use all of mine and, and think that that is uh, a good thing, okay? Then you're going to develop a systems model for an emergency alert and response plan based on the idea that your notification system, location one, being alerted of an earthquake and a possible tsunami. Draw your steps on sticky notes uh, and include any system or component. What I'm looking for you to do is, is I want you to make, you can use sticky notes, you can use notebook paper ripped up, in, ripped up or cut up into little sections. Do that for city or for location buoy number one. Do it for location buoy number two, and that's where you stop. Bring those with you to class the, the next time we have class, uh, which would be next week because this week we're doing activity one, two, one in class. Next week we'll finish one, two, two in class. Okay, and then we'll move forward together as a class to finish everything else up. I hope that gives you a decent explanation of what's going on in class, uh, or I'm sorry, at home activity to the, for this week. If you have questions, feel free to email.